Hi, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to write a simple model using our new Tellurium platform. This platform is based on, on Python and uses the SPIDER IDE. Uh, so what you see in front of you is actually the SPIDER IDE. On the left is the editor window where you can enter new models. On the right here is just a simple uh, Python console so I can do things like if I can type properly. I can do things like that. Now to start a new model, I'm going to start a new editor window. So to do that, I'll click on New in the toolbar. So let me do that. Let me get rid of that text. So here I have an empty editor window uh, where I can now start typing my new model. Now the first thing you have to do in every case is to import the Tellurium package. And to save you from typing Tellurium all the time, I'm going to short, shortcut it to TE. Now what kind of model are we going to build? Well, we're going to build a simple sequence of reactions, three reactions, that go from S1 to S4. Okay, so that's the kind of reaction we're going to build. So to build this reaction, I have to describe this using the antimony syntax, and to do that, let me just slow, let me just type this text in and I'll explain what it is. So what we've got here is I'm using a method in, within the Tellurium package called load A, and that stands for load antimony model. And that method takes a single string argument, which is going to be the antimony string that describes and represents the model. This, this method, load A, will return a reference to a roadrunner object called R. So the first thing to do is describe the model in antimony, and you do that by typing each reaction separately like so. So on the left-hand side of the reactants, on the right-hand side of the products, and finally the uh, S3 to S4. So those are the three reactions. And each reaction needs a rate law, and I'm just going to give uh, first-order kinetics for each one. Each one has its own rate constant, K1 to K3, like so. So that's my model. The last thing I need to do is set up the values for the rate constants. Let's do it here. Oops. Um, that one, and um, finally the initial values for the concentrations, in this case it's just going to be S1 is going to be 10, S2 is going to be 0, S3 is going to be 0, S4 is going to be 0. Now the units here you might be wondering, well, they, um, they're up to, up to me. Um, the, main, the main criterion is that they're all consistent, so for example the rate constants K1 to K3 might be uh, per second, in which case um, seconds must be used throughout. The concentrations might be in millimolar, in which case millimolar should be used throughout. Okay, so that's my model. I've finished it. Next thing you do is to carry out a simulation. Now once I have the reference to Roadrunner, I can do all sorts of things, including do a simulation. And to do a simulation, I just call the simulate method. Now simulate returns an array which contains all the results, and I'm just going to assign that to a variable called result. Uh, simulate takes a number of arguments, the most important of which are the time start, the time end, the number of points. And well, that's the simulation. Now, um, lastly, I'd like to be able to plot those results, so I can do that. There's a convenient method on, on the Roadrunner object called plot. And that understands how to plot the data that comes back from simulate. And that's my model. Now let me just get rid of this text here, because I don't need that anymore. Um, now I just run it. So let's run it. And I run it by clicking on the green button. Now first thing is done here is ask me to save the file, because this is the first time I've, uh, I've got this model. And you can see that it ran the model here, down here. You can see uh, there's some warning notices. But other than that, it was fine. I'll bring up the plot, which is in the taskbar. And here you can see the four lines that represent the four concentrations that were plotted, that were simulated. And you can see that beyond 10, however, there's some more dynamics. So let's extend the time simulation to beyond 10 to, say, 50. Redo the simulation, bring up the plot window, and now you can see that it's, uh, much, it's plotted all the way from 0 to 50. Now, you might not be interested in all those curves. You might only be interested in one or two of them. Um, what I can do is I can tell the simulate to actually plot, um, return only specific kinds of data. In this case, I'm going to ask it to return time in the first column, and let's say S2 in the second column. Now if I run, I only get a single line representing S2. Okay, and that's how you do a simulation with Tellurium. 